Jerickson Profar looks like the best remaining free agent, but is he the best for the Twins? And some funny business going on with Carlos Correa and the Giants. It's all coming up on today's episode of Lockdown Twins. You are Locked On Twins. Your daily Minnesota Twins podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. And welcome to Locked On Minnesota Twins podcast. Today is Tuesday, December 20th, and I'm your gracious host, Nash Walker. Thanks for making Locked On Twins your first listen every single day on the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. Again, this is Nash Walker. I've been hosting this podcast for three seasons, four off seasons. been running at Twins Daily for four seasons as well. And I'm coming to you today back from a family vacation. So we've had this trip planned for a year. We went on a cruise to Mexico. For eight days. And that's why you didn't get anything on YouTube. I did drop three episodes, audio only. And actually, starting this week, it's three episodes a week throughout the offseason until pitchers and catchers report. So every offseason, that's how it works at Lockdown. We go to three episodes a week. Some weeks you'll get four, some weeks you may get five, depending on uh, what we get out in news and free agency and trades. Last week, it was a light week. I was on a family vacation, but of course, it was the busiest week of the offseason so far. Of course it was. Carlos Correa signed, twin signed Joey Gallo. Just a lot going on. Jerickson Profar is the best remaining free agent. Analyzing his fit on the Twins roster, whether he makes some sense for them. Overall, it's been such a disappointing offseason, I would say, for the Twins. I like Christian Vasquez. You know, Joey Gallo is a buy low candidate. Okay. But overall, the offseason has been a in the toilet. Carlos Correa, there's some funny business going on with the San Francisco Giants. We'll take a quick look at that on this episode as well and what it could mean. Honestly, there, we, we need more information overall on that situation, but we'll look at it today. Jerickson Profar is the best remaining free agent. And of Keith Law's top 35 free agents, there are three remaining. Jerickson Profar, Nathan Yavaldi, and Gary Sanchez. Not in that order. I believe Profar is 11th. Gary is 25th, and I want to say Yavaldi is 30th on Keith Laws. He had a top 50. I'm looking at the top 35. Many of the top 50 have been signed as well, but Jerks and Profar, by far, is the best remaining free agent. And Laws is high on Profar. I think it feels like higher than a lot of people are, and I think for good reason. Jerks and Profar is a switch hitter, for those who don't know, played for the Padres the last three seasons, former top prospect, with Texas, highly regarded prospect, former shortstop, now left fielder, but can play a bunch of different spots. Left field, second base, he can play short in a pinch, which could help the Twins in their current situation. But I don't, I don't think you want to play pro far at short every day or even two or three times a week. But the reason there's a draw, I think, from Keith Law is you look at the last three seasons combined for Profar, he has a 333 on base percentage. So he draws walks at a high rate. He doesn't chase. He makes a lot of contact. In 2022 specifically, was in the 84th percentile in strikeout rate, 85th percentile in walk rate. The issue with Jerks and Profar has not been drawing walks or getting on base, and he hits for a decent average the last three seasons. has hit 244. The issue has been hitting the ball with authority, driving the ball. He has a career 386 slugging percentage, but in 2022, hit 15 home runs, started pulling the ball more and pulling the ball in the air, which is, those are good signs, some good signs in the batted ball data. And maybe the Twins feel they could pull even more out of Jerks and Profar in the power department, even if they don't, or even if you know the team who signs him doesn't, you're getting a three-win player from 2022. You're getting somebody who has that 333 on base percentage in the last three seasons. OPS plus in 2022 was 111. Curious in his in his OPS plus numbers, he goes from solid in 2018 at 107 to not so solid at 91 in 2019. 2020, 114 in the COVID season. 2021, 83. And then 2022, 111. He like bounces up and down in OPS plus. One constant over the last three years, and actually in four out of the last five years, he, he had a rough 2019 season with Oakland, just a, a short stint in Oakland. Maybe it was the ballpark, too, with all that foul territory. One constant is that on-base percentage. It's solid. It's above league average. His OPS over the last four years, 
over the last five years with 2019 even included is above average. As I said, high contact. He's going to get on base. He draws walks. The batted ball data was way better in 2022 than it was in 2021, but still not really where you want it to be. He was in the 49th percentile in expected weighted on base average. It's pretty good. League average and in, in expected WOBA at 315. If you get a league average expected weighted on base average, which we know is weighing on base percentage with the value of, of a base, of an extra base, it's, it's why that I like that stat and why StatCast you know, has that in their percentiles. If you get a league average expected WOBA or a league average WOBA, he was league average, essentially league average and expected last year. And you have a high contact guy who gets on base, draws walks, you know, makes contact and hit at the top of an order. In that case, high on base percentage, that's a valuable hitter. What is he like defensively? And defensively, is he a fit for this team? And as a switch hitter, is he a fit for the team? Plus, Carlos Correa, some funny business with the San Francisco Giants in what was supposed to be his opening press conference, his introductory press conference today. Postpone. I'm going to tell you why and what might be coming next after this word from betonline.net. Betonline.net is your number one source, folks, for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there from pro football to college bowl season to basketball and the World Cup. We've got it all at betonline.net. If you love sports podcasts, you can find those at betonline as well. We're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info you can head to the website today or you can use your mobile device to learn more bet online is where the game starts again betonline.net it's your number one source for sports betting info stats news and analysis it's very easy to use whether you want to use your phone you want to use your desktop whatever you're looking for in any platform you're looking for betonline.net has you covered and if you've listened to all those lockdown podcasts i know you have including lockdown twins today you're going to want to go check out those podcasts at betonline Net. BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. BetOnline is where the game starts. Thank you for making Lockdown Twins your first listen every day. Make sure to check out Lockdown Sports today, the biggest stories around the sports world in 20 minutes or less, plus instant reactions, game recaps, and Lockdown's take of the day. Lockdown Sports today available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast. Jerks and Profar defensively. He's a former shortstop. Came up as a highly touted prospect, highly touted shortstop prospect. Now is like an everyday left fielder. Found a home in 2022, plays left field, which twins have a lot of outfielders as currently constructed. They don't have a lot of right-handed outfielders, though, outside of Byron Buxton and Cal Garlic and maybe some others in the minors. Jerks and Profar is a switch hitter, so that, that helps. But he's basically an everyday left fielder now, I guess, or was in 2022. But he was terrible defensively, fifth or ninth, I'm sorry, ninth percentile in outs above average. His jump, not good. Good arm, good arm strength, but outs above average, ninth percentile. In 2021, outs above average, fifth percentile. He was a three-win player. His bat kind of carried him, it seems, in 2022. That's weird, though. That's weird for him to be in the ninth percentile as a former shortstop, you know, very good athlete to be a poor left fielder. If you're signing Jerks and Profar today, who he is today, he's a three-win player, I think, in 2022 or in 2023. He was in 2022. But I think the hope would be for a team like the Twins or like anybody else who's going to sign Jerks and Profar, the hope is, hey, you know, he's a former shortstop and he hasn't played extensively in, in the outfield beyond 2022 we're we're banking on him being a league average defender. We're going to make some adjustments or, or we're going to just buy into him as an athlete, as an outfielder and he's got a full year under his belt out there. We're going to we're going to play him in left field and we think he's going to be a, an at least league average defender out there. Then he's a four win player. He's a four or four and a half win player if he's if he's better in left field. If he's just better than a ninth percentile left fielder, man, or ninth percentile and outs above average. You got yourself a player. You got yourself a player there. And I think for what should be a discount, he's 29 years old. He's still very young. He's going to be 30 in February. Like I said, former top prospect. I think you're looking at a three-year, $32 million deal, maybe three-year, $45 million deal for Jerks and Profar. Could be a bargain for any team. He's not somebody I've looked at because, frankly, he doesn't really fill a, a hole. You know, He's not going to play much shortstop 
He plays the outfield, which the Twins have a ton of them. And ultimately, I don't think he's going to be a twin. But at this point, we're looking for anybody, right? The Twins have have basically flunked free agency overall. If you bring Jerks and Profar in, if you would have told me that before the offseason started, I would say, that's great if he's your third edition. If you got Correa or you got Bogarts or you got Swanson and then you got uh, Nathan Yavaldi or you got uh, – Carlos Rodon, and then you got Jerks and Profar. I would say, man, what an offseason. Even if he was your second edition, if you said, hey, we got Carlos Correa and we got Jerks and Profar. Hey, we got Jose Abreu and Jerks and Profar. I would say, okay, there's a nice pair of additions right there. You know, it's a nice pair of additions. I like that. But if Jerks and Profar is your best edition, that's a little rough. But at this point, beggars can't be choosers on the free agent market. And it, we've gotten to this position where – I'm hoping they sign Jerks and Profar <laughs> to a three-year deal. Because what else? I mean, who else is there? It doesn't sound like they're going to sign Uvalde. Gary Sanchez ain't coming back. That's your top 35 from Keith Law. And then beyond him, you're looking at uh, more reclamation projects. And honestly, guys who don't really fit in with the Twins roster. And then you're looking at Corey Kluber, you know, Zach Greinke. You're looking at some... Some in the weeds types of players there, but that's that's where the twins are at. So Jerks and Profar, yeah, I would take them on the 2023 roster because they have done very little to improve and they've gotten worse from 2022 because they lost their best player in Carlos Correa. You could argue Byron Buxton is their best player when he's on the field, but uh, their most consistent and, and healthy and best player in 2022 was Carlos Correa. So I actually voted Luis Suarez as the team MVP, and I'll stick by that. But I, I understand the argument that Carlos Correa was the team's MVP. I think he's the best player, like the best talent. Him and Buxton are the best talents on the team, but that's that could go either way. Speaking of Correa, what is going on with the Giants? What's going on there? I mean, here's the story. It comes out today. and Of course, Carlos Correa announced he's signing with the Giants last week. comes out today that – this press conference ain't happening. He was supposed to be there today. They were supposed to announce Carlos Correa today, put him in the jersey, do the big press conference, do the big show. They did it with the Twins last year in Fort Myers in spring training. That was supposed to be today for Carlos Correa. The Giants bring out this press release or send out an email. It's postponed with no reason given. It's postponed. Then the AP, a short while after, Associated Press comes out and says, oh, there's a problem with the medicals. There's a problem with a, a medical report, the physical. He, said he has to pass his physical before the contract is set in stone. When we see when Jeff Passan tweets or Ken Rosenthal tweets or somebody tweets out or a report comes out even that two sides are in agreement on a deal. The contract is not signed in that moment. Sometimes it's signed simultaneously. Like I think Dylan Bundy was signed at the same time he was announced last year. But the bigger signings, you'll hear about the report first that they agreed to it. And then they go for a physical, wherever that place is. And then they're they're announced by the team and they're officially put on the 40-man roster. They're officially a member of the organization. Correa was announced to an agreement last week. He went for his physical and it sounds like there was a flag in the physical. It's not his back, which he's had back problems in his career. It's not his back, according to uh, Susan Sluicer with the, I think, San Francisco Chronicle. It's not his back. Haven't heard anything. Crickets. But there is, it's weird. It, it puts the entire contract in doubt. And very rarely do you see these things fall through. It's very rare that you see a 13, 14, 15-year deal, period, but I think it's even more rare to see those deals fall through. But you would think a 13-year deal for $350 million with Carlos Correa, you would think there's – because there's more risk in that, there is more of a possibility that it falls through. But as of today, Carlos Correa is a free agent. He has not put pen to paper with the San Francisco Giants. And the Twins have a history with the Giants, with medicals. You know, Sam Dyson, I think they were unhappy with what happened there in 2019, that he was hurt, he was pitching hurt, came to the Twins, pitch hurt, pitch poorly, and it was just a complete botch on all accounts. And I think the Twins felt uh, felt a little upset about that, if I remember correctly. Maybe the Giants just don't have a good history with these medicals and these physicals. This is, uh, this is fascinating because it very rarely happens. You almost always hear the physical is passed, the physical is passed. And I think still Carlos Correa is going to sign this deal with the Giants. I think he's going to sign 
for 13 years, 350 million. It's a postponed press conference. I don't think there's much today behind it, but it's absolutely news and it's absolutely something to keep an eye on in the next couple of days. We'll we'll hear. We'll hear what happens there with Carlos Correa. The Twins are <laughs> they're in a, a miracle type of position right now. They need a miracle in this offseason to salvage an A-level grade or even, I think, a B-level grade at this point. The the hopes and the the clean books and the, the player pool and the four shortstops, premier shortstops, are all signed for $170 million plus. And the options out there with Carlos Rodon, you can sign an ace, you know, Verlander, DeGrom. I didn't think we're very viable for the Twins, but th- this was a very hopeful offseason in Twins territory. They need a miracle to come through on a very hopeful off season on, on they had so many po- possibilities this off season. They need a miracle. They need, they need a, a new free agent to, to enter the market. Right. And it's just not going to happen. It's just not, it's just not going to happen without something insane happening. That's where the twins have put themselves. Like this is, this is done ownership in front office in tandem. You look at them as a tandem. It's not always smart to do that. But this was done by the group. This is there's a reason they're sitting in this spot. It's because they didn't sign Correa. It's because they didn't sign Turner. It's because they didn't sign Swanson or Bogarts. And they weren't going to play at Bogarts at 280 million. I understand that they weren't going to play with Jose Abreu probably on that three year deal. These are guys I've opened on throughout the offseason. I think would be nice additions and like middle of the order impact additions to this Twins team. It's their own doing that they're right here right now. It's their own doing. And you look at the trade market, and even last year when the Twins needed so many starting pitchers to fill holes on the roster, even last year you could look at the starting pitching market, the trade market, and you saw Frankie Montas, Chris Bassett, Sean Maniah, three in one rotation in Oakland's rotation. They all three traded. They're traded off the roster. You looked at Sonny Gray, Tyler Malley, There were options, Luis Castillo, three options in the Reds rotation. There aren't a ton of rebuilding teams. There's only like two or three who are rebuilding and and maybe still have major league pieces like the Pirates have Brian Reynolds. But last year, those rebuilding teams hadn't yet fully committed to the rebuild. They were like starting to get into rebuild mode. So it was a really flush market. And the Twins landed Sonny Gray and Tyler Malley. I think that's that's good that they landed both of those guys. This time around, though, those same options are not on the table. I don't think the pirates have, they don't have any starting pitchers to offer at at the front of a rotation. You know, the the reds have traded their guys away. It's, it's over. The A's have traded their guys away. Who are you looking at the Marlins? And I think the Marlins are the best fit for the twins, but they want to win. I think the Marlins and the brewers are I've identified as the best fits, but neither of those teams are rebuilding and neither of those teams are going to, you know, just give away Pablo Lopez or give away, Zach Gallon in Arizona or, or give away Corbin Burns. That's not going to happen otherwise. But I think they, they're they less likely to do so because they're not clearly in a rebuild. It's problematic on the trade market. It's, it's especially problematic because the Twins have traded away top 100 prospects to land guys in the past. Last year, they traded away prospects to get Tyler Malley, to get Sonny Gray. They traded their first-round pick from 2021 in Chase Petty. They've made moves that have depleted the farm system and depleted the farm system in some cases at the top, you know, in their top five to 10 range. It's a really tough spot. It's a really, really tough spot that they're in right now. And that's why we're talking about jerks and profile, who I think is a nice player. And I think could be a three or four win player, but wasn't on my radar because I thought they would be doing bigger things. You know, I think profile would be a nice ad and maybe it's just me not doing my due diligence at the beginning of the off season, looking at him I still don't I don't think he's going to be a twin, but that's what we're doing now. We're looking at Jerks and Profar when he didn't fill any hole on this team. He didn't at the beginning of the offseason. He doesn't really now. It's um it's it's a spot they put themselves in. Like I said, Profar overall, I realize I forgot the platoon splits. In his career, 717 OPS as a left-handed hitter, so against right-handed pitching and a 686 OPS against left-handed pitching pretty even splits there, but a better left-handed hitter, which the twins have a, I don't know if you knew this, but the twins have a lot of left-handed corner outfielders and jerks and Profar in his career, a better left-handed hitter 
I guess it would it would pay to look at 2022 as well and look at that split. As a left-handed hitter in 2022, 718 OPS was actually better right-handed. 734 OPS right-handed and uh, more on base ability against left-handed pitching. So I like that. I like that a little bit better. Jerks and Profar, could he be a twin? I don't know, but he's the best remaining free agent. It doesn't sound like they're going to land Nathan Yavaldi. Keep an eye on this Correa news. We'll see what happens there. We'll see how the twins get creative in this offseason because, man, they love that word, and, man, they're going to have to use it right here and right now. Thank you so much for making Lockdown Twins your first listen every single day on the Lockdown Podcast Network, where it's your team every single day. They'll make Lockdown Sports today your second listen. Peter Bukowski brings you the biggest stories from around the sports world in 20 minutes. Get the analysis and opinions before anyone else with our local and national experts and insiders. Lockdown Sports Today podcast available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast. We'll be back Whenever we get some news, Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, if not, we will return to look at those trade targets, maybe offensive trade targets. We haven't looked at any bats the Twins could trade for. If they got creative, we'll do that later this week as well. Thank you so much. Have a great day. And as always, go Twins.